arrived. It is Friday. It is 4.09 in the afternoon here in New Jersey. What's the temp? It's about 46 degrees. A little cool, but nothing too crazy. And uh, apparently, and I say apparently, well, I mean, there was an earthquake out here. I was asleep, though. Um, I was asleep till like 1145, almost almost 12 o'clock noon. So I woke up and I had woke up to texts uh, from people in different parts of the country like, hey, is everything good? And I'm like, what y'all talking about? They're like, it was an earthquake. I'm like, it was? So, so yeah, so uh, I missed out on that. That doesn't typically happen in this part of the country as much as it happens elsewhere. But uh, yeah. I, I missed out on the earthquake stone to Sass, and that's what happened. There was an earthquake out here, and I missed it. But um, I, I, I suppose that there are, uh, you know, worse things to miss out on. Christina Morbius, what's going on? How y'all doing? I know I'm finna, well, let's see. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I'm probably just going to get me some rest and relaxation because I need some sleep. And then I'll turn up I'll turn up more this weekend, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We will see. I really don't know. I really don't know yet. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, we might as well go ahead and just start and just start with it. The whole country's talking about it. Hold up, let's see. Uh, I got a couple of them pulled up. Um, hold on. New Jersey, New York City rocked by rare, rare 4.8 magnitude earthquake. And again, like I said, I, I was asleep for it. I slept through the whole thing. You know, I I, I did. I was not there. I was in dreamland. I think I, I got up out of bed at like 1148. That's when I pretty much woke up and just got to it. I missed out. All right, let's see what they're talking about. Millions of New Yorkers felt the effects of a 4.8% or 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Uh, the epicenter of which was in central New Jersey. That is about 40 miles, 45 miles west of Manhattan. We actually felt it here in the capital in Albany. People felt it on Long Island uh, and all over the state of New York and indeed the East Coast. We're taking this extremely seriously and here's why. Uh, there is always the possibility of aftershocks and I'll get to that in a moment, but uh, we have not felt the magnitude of an earthquake of this level since about 2011 this is one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast to occur in the last century. So I immediately directed my emergency management team the second we received word of this to start doing damage assessments, uh, any life in danger, and finding out whether there's any bridges or tunnels that are compromised. At this point, uh, by, you know, heading into an hour and a half after the effects, we've not identified any life threat. Oh, well, but we are certainly asking our local law enforcement and emergency services teams to be on guard for that as well. But again, we are going to be reviewing all potentially vulnerable infrastructure state sites throughout the state of New York. That is critically important in the aftermath of a of an event. Like <laughs> right. Ivanka mad. She she frustrated. She put she put all her spiritual energy to that. And lo and behold, because, again, you know, er earthquakes don't happen as much out in this in this area which is why i guess it was bigger news i said i i missed it i slept through the whole thing but uh right he, <laughs> her uh, her ghost was like nah you got me fucked up <laughs> like this now again i have a few safety tips because because new yorkers are not accustomed to having earthquakes in, a, in our state and everyone should continue to take this seriously if there is an aftershock People are encouraged to drop and to cover and to hold on. Drop to the floor, cover your neck, and hold on to something that is sturdy. Take caution near any damaged buildings. Again, we don't have reports of damaged buildings at this time. It is very early in the assessment process. But you know, if there is an after effect, please stay away from buildings, that, uh, especially our high rises. I said, I woke, uh, I woke up to a whole bunch of texts. People was like, you OK? I'm like, what y'all talking about? They was like, did you feel the earthquake? I'm like, what? So, yes, again, 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit the Northeast. And I mean, as far as I can tell, there really aren't. And it says right here, too, like I hadn't seen even just kind of scanning through everything. I didn't see that there was really much damage or anything like that. 
but it happened. I think that I was, I th well, the, I mean, obviously I was here for this earthquake, but like I said, I was asleep. I'm trying to remember, I might have been in like grade school somewhere the last time I remember feeling an earthquake. But so apparently this is around where it happened. Epicenter near White House Station, New Jersey, 4.8. The plate tectonics was like, shift. They made a quick little move. Limited damage reported in New Jersey. All right, well, hold on. Let's see what they was talking about on, uh, yeah, so here, here's here's the uh, the magnitude, I guess. Where, where we at? The Richter magnitude. So if it goes up here, that's when it's real. That's when it's really crazy. And I know out in California, I know one of the reasons why they build stuff spread out so much is because there's more earthquakes out there. Damaging earthquakes felt in New Jersey. Oh man, they go way back. Seventeen thirty-seven. All right, let's see. I got to hold on. I got like one pulled up where they going over everything off of social media or just like uh like some of the people like weren't on the shows cuz I like I said I remember one of them and then like you just kind of like hmm like what the hell like why is everything shaking what's going on All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. New Jersey earthquake impact seen on air across sports shows. The top 3 teams in the Western Conference. They're 1 and 8. One and eight. Okay. okay. This is serious. Stephen A, I'm not even joking. The top three teams in the West. <laughs> yeah, every, see, everything was just eight. shaking right there. You one see her eight. arms. Okay. The top three teams in the Western Conference. Everything so was like boom, boom, boom. One and eight. Okay. okay. This is serious. Stephen A, I'm not even joking. And Perk, I lived in LA for four years and I experienced like two earthquakes. Stephen A, I swear to you on everything, I think we just had an earthquake in New York. Like this was absolutely insane. The whole studio, it was legit, everything. It was legit an earthquake oh, it was an earthquake. It was it's been earthquake. confirmed. It was actually an earthquake. Confirmed. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, that is true. But that was uh, that was entertaining right there. Who was your best? You can see everything. Are we having a see everything shaking right there. Yeah, that is true. But that was uh, that was entertaining right there. Who was your best? Are we having an earthquake? Seriously, are we having an earthquake? I think we're I having honest, an earthquake. I'm not kidding. Hey, we're finally going to end up on awful, awful announcing. We're having an earthquake. <laughs> What's going on here? Is everything okay? Control room is shaking. We're shaking. Are you guys okay? You guys are all right, right? We're staying in this, okay. but I'm not kidding you. This is not a bit. All right, let's, all right, go, well, to, let's, let's go to break. break. Nah, guys, you, you let's go to break. Because I wonder what it would look like if it was like, because uh, on the other slide we uh, had up, there was like a scale uh in like the damage and how bad they are but i wonder what it would uh what the camera would look like if it was like i don't know a six seven eight whatever the magnitudes are however high it goes up like that shit would just like if it was because if it was big enough i definitely wouldn't uh wouldn't have slept through it i i, I definitely wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to sleep aren't you supposed to like go outside if the if there's an earthquake that's bad enough um I think, yeah, I, I remember doing some earthquake drills when I was in elementary school, but they don't happen, you know, super frequently in Missouri. But I do remember some of them happening there. Swing and a miss on these unis. I, I mean, I don't know what's going on. It's also, as Chris Hess sits up, it feels like the room is shaking a little bit, does it not? I mean, the room definitely is still shaking. A little bit of a rumble. One of those TV lights was swinging. There's a loose wire that's rocking. That was something. That was definitely something. He was uh, extra smooth about it. I don't know what I would have said. I mean, if it unless it was, unless it was like a crazy earthquake, then it's just kind of like hmm, everything's shaking. <laughs> 
Um, full disclosure, I just need to say, we just had an earthquake here in New York City. <laughs> Either that or the subway underneath the ground just came out of the ground and bumped the entire But, but I just want to say I'm, I'm a little bit freaked out. I didn't know you could have earthquakes in New York. So if anybody could look into that. Yeah, I guess that's the only reason why everybody's talking about it so much is because it doesn't happen as often here. Huh, all we got Wolf Blitzer narrating the earthquake. This ought to be one of the most exciting things ever. Uh, to, our, uh, to our viewers, we're getting some incredible new video just in uh, out of uh, uh, New Jersey showing the earthquake. Watch this. Well, it doesn't seem so incredible. <laughs> it's an incredible new video. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to y'all. This shit's pretty boring. This, this this really this really isn't a this this really doesn't seem to be uh like it was really that drastic. I mean, it happened. It's worth talking about. Like I said, I slept through it. You know, I I slept through it totally, so it couldn't have been nothing for real. I guess I I probably thought I was just rolling around in the bed or something. I didn't notice it at all. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's it's more social media stuff. We don't really need to look through it. We don't really, really need to look through it too much. OK, hold on. What we got? We got. And look, listen, we know that Donald Trump owes a lot of money. and He's going to have to keep on coughing up that money. But. Man, I mean, wherever he can grift, he is. So check this out. Check this shit out. Not surprising at all, but quite hilarious. Desperate Donald Trump talks Larry Trump into hawking my pillow junk, and it's cringe. <laughs> my pillow, yo. You know what's honestly kind? Of, it's honestly kind of sad about Mike Lindell because he he really turned his life around, and then and then every and then things went south again. And it's not even like it was for a good cause or for for a for a good purpose in any type of way. I mean. You know, he he was on he was addicted to crack and you know that was impacting his life. And then he put together a business that sold pillows that had him doing pretty well. And then he basically just sold out to Donald Trump. And for what? Like he's still on TV talking about four years later, this dude's still on TV talking about Donald Trump won the election and I've got the proof and I've got the evidence. And it's like, man, there's no way that you really can think that. $25 extravaganza, two pack multi use my pillows, just $25. My pillow sandals, $25. Their six pack towel sets, you guessed it, $25. Their new four pack dish towels, $25. And for the first time ever, the premium my pillow with all new Giza frap fabric is just $25. Just $25. My man's is selling. I wanna. I wonder what's up with his uh with his shoes. How many people bought them shoes? He's selling Bibles. He gonna keep coming out with stuff. True social. That shit tanked in like a day because of course. I mean, of course it would. Uh huh. Candace Owens. We got some. We got some stuff with Candace Owens today. I'm if I'm super mellow and super chill today, just because I'm a little tired. I'm okay. I'm fine. You know what I mean. I'm good. I'm just. It's Friday. I'm chilling. You know what I mean. I'm laid back. I'm comfortable. You know, everything's all good. All right, let's talk a little bit about Candace Owens. <laughs> let's start with this. Uh. Uh, uh. Who is? Oh, we got Sylvester Stallone in the building, my man's. Hey, my man, go on, go on ahead. Is this is this real? I don't know. I'm not upset about it. I'm just curious if it's real or if it's somebody behind that or if it's like some type of a bot because it just kind of seems robotic. <laughs> it has an absolute honor to have Joe Bro as the president of our great job nation. For what type of chat GPT bullshit is this? What's going on? <laughs> Joe Bro really knows. 
what it means to be a true leader and a stellar president. What is this? <laughs> Joe bro. Hey, yo, we got, <laughs> we got to, <laughs> We gonna have to get some shirts that say that they say shit like that, like Joe Bro, and then just going going off like that. All right, Christopher Ruff, Ruffo Rufo, I don't know which one it is. Savage is Candace Owens for following Ugly Path. Uh, uh, Ugly Path suggests she could find an audience on Infowars. Hey, she probably could. Honestly, I mean. I feel like honestly, the best bet, the best path forward for Candace Owens is just. Just do your thing on your own platforms. You already have enough of an audience. You know, I mean, she's not really going to be able to meaningfully rebrand herself. And even if she could, she's not talented enough to do it anyway. I mean, you know, because if she was, then she would have already had more to put forth. Um, Just keep doing what you're doing. You know. I don't know where we at. Move this so I can see it better. <laughs> Conservative activist Chris Rufo weighed in on Candace Owens' recent departure from the Daily Wire on Friday, accusing her of following an ugly path and suggesting she find a new audience on InfoWars. Quote, I generally avoid intra-right conflict, but the ongoing Daily Wire Candace Owens dispute is an important moment for the right, which I believe merits comment. My man, he said... First, it's not a violation of free speech to let a multi-million dollar contract expi expire. Which is reportedly what happened. The Daily Wire is not obligated to subsidize Candace Owens' speech, especially if she is deviating from the publication's editorial standard of causing problems for the business. DW is not an open platform such as YouTube, Facebook, X, etc. And the owners of a publication are under no obligation. That's the Daily Wire, DW. Uh, I was I was basically telling myself that <laughs> I was like, huh, what? oh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the Daily Wire. <laughs> Owen spent months talking, pub taking public shots at Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring, which is a tacit request to get canned and then play the martyr. I mean, yeah, I get, that's that's pretty straightforward. I mean, she kind of, you know, she 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 ruffled feathers with people who were in charge of her position. But I mean, look, at the end of the day. Like I said, she really can just keep doing what she's doing and just invest your money. But other than a salary that she's missing out on, I don't, you know, I I feel like not, not that much really is different. Just do your thing on YouTube. She just out. She just out of the salary now, at least from the Daily Wire. But we got more from Candace Owens because apparently she was like. She was fat shaming Megan McCain or something. Megan McCain responds to Candace Owens calling her clinically obese. And see, this is what I'm saying. Like, this basically is what Candace Owens' career is. And this is the box that she's trapped herself in. But just keep doing it. I, I mean, honestly, I feel like there's kind of a permanent market for stuff like this. Um, you know, so so much of what you see, like if you look at stuff like the red pill and, and and which is kind of quote unquote dying but that that attitude um you know that pickup type of stuff is nothing new and it's not going anywhere and just kind of that conservative attitude on the mythical past that never was that's one of the most interesting things about people who are like too far to the right you know who are too deep into the conservative ideology is it's like they romanticize a past that never really existed you know like when they say stuff like, you know, think it was just better when women were when women were in the house, you know, society changed. But back in the day, you know, women were all happy in the house and men just worked. And it's like most people could not have afforded to do that. You, you know, I mean, if you were in the working class, like at no point could you necessarily have been able to afford a one person salary. You know, like if you were in the low, if you were in the lower classes, women, women have always worked. Women have, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or like they romanticize, like, you know, back in the day, re relationships were so much more strong. Like, oh, they weren't like people have always been people. And the further back in time you go, generally speaking, the less rights women had. So how can that be true? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how can that be true? Um <clears throat> 
you know, they'll talk about like the marriage rates. Uh, you know, so many people are getting divorced now. And and that while that is true, like there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, marriage is an institution. It's not like a it's not a it, it's not like a it's not like breathing. It's 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 not like a necessarily a natural part of our biology. And I'm not talking about monogamy or polygamy. I'm just saying like marriage is, is a human concept. It's an idea. And when it's carried forth, it's a legal agreement between two people in the state. That's what marriage is like when you really look at the nuts and bolts of it and the uses of it have changed over time. So, again, like they talk about, oh, like people were just happy when everything was the perfect nuclear. You know, there's so many variables that conservatives just don't don't really pay attention to, you know? Um, so it, it's, <clears throat> and again, the further back in time you go, um, our, you know, we, we didn't have as much of a grasp on medicine and healthcare. And we were, the further back in time you go, just generally the more savage uh, we were to one another. So it's like, Let's go back to the 1400s when people died from simple infections. <laughs> like, no, thank you. No, thanks. Let's not do that. Okay, what does she say, though? Bunch of blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't even want to read this bullshit. Megan McCain said, I had the best life. I'm so lucky, truly happy and content in all ways, including my body. I wish that for all women and will continue to be a safe, compassionate and open space for all people whose weight has fluctuated up and down in different stages in life like mine has. I mean, it, it, it's just like, why, like, Candace, why are you why are you why are you saying this publicly? Like, it, you know, it's just kind of it's just it, like childish. Um. You know, people, I'm in the business of talking a lot of shit, but, you know, you typically don't say stuff like that about people. Like, you you, you, you talk about, and I'm not even, I'm not even saying just for, like, moral purposes. It's just childish and immature. Like, typically when you go after people, it, it's more so about the way they think. Um, maybe you go after their way of life, like, if they're low down pieces of shit, like, type of stuff like that. Um, maybe you go after what they stand for, how they behave their history but it, you know like it's just really cheap lame shots to just be like ah oh, you're you're fat like you know like it's just whack but again that just goes to show like she's just Candace Owens is not just just keep doing what you're doing i i think she's rather miserable anytime cuz any she i don't envy her at all and, and Megan McCain isn't even <laughs> clinic like she's obese. Like she ain't even that big. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Megan McCain isn't even that big. But it's just it's just lame. It's just it's just lame. You know, like uh, there because there's all there's always something that you can like pick on for some for like about what somebody looks like. You know, like. It don't matter who you are. There's always like a joke to crack. So like, unless someone's being petty with you like that, then it's just kind of like, wait, she is. Yeah, she's just whack. Okay, hold on. What's up with this? What? <laughs> okay, I don't even know if we we know we ain't even gonna pull this one up. Who cares? All right, check this out. We got Tim Smith in the building. What's going on? Uh. Right. And, and that's the other the and, and hey, Christina, that's that's really the truth too. Like it, it's it's like Candace, you not I mean like you say that as if you're like the pinnacle of beauty. There's nothing wrong with Candace Owen. She's fine looking. But like you say that as if like you're like the most beautiful woman in the world and you're not. You feel me? Like and no one cares, but you it's just it's just lame. It's like, Candace, it, why are you saying this? Because she's whack. 
because she's insecure. That's why she's saying it. Because I'll tell you what, you know what I'm saying? Hey, shit, man. Man, I, I ain't got no problem with, with, with bigger ladies. You know what I'm saying? They, bigger ladies be sexy, too. You know, so much of it is, you know, we're, we're kind of getting off topic now. We're kind of getting off topic now. But it's just like, Candace, shut up. <laughs> okay, so my man, this is a former Fox News exec. He says of Donald Trump Jr. He says, Donald Jr. is a pathetic, low IQ oaf who spews ridiculous lies to please daddy. That is pretty much a haiku of who this man is. That summed it up pretty good right there. Oh, it go. It went to the to to X. It went over here. Oh, we don't even. Well, we've already seen Trump Jr. saying stuff like that, <laughs> but that's just funny because it, it pretty much exactly sums up who he is: a pathetic low IQ oaf who spews ridiculous lies to please daddy. Indeed. Um. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Now this is this is what I was talking about when I when 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 I put in the title that Joe Biden sucks because it's like, dude, your biggest issue in these swing states is and your biggest issue is a youth vote in these swing states, and what they really have been made quite clear is they like you to be tougher on Israel. They like you put your foot down, call for a ceasefire, make force a ceasefire. Do more. That's really all you got to do. And you will blindfold. You will win this election with a blindfold on. But no, 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 no. He He's not going to do that. So here we got a couple of things. So first we got. Here we got this pulled up anyway. We got Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo rips Biden for mixed message on Israel, letting hostages become an afterthought, political pressure, not an excuse to be weak. It's true, man. It's like, look, Biden, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the way the world works before, before we get to business, before we get to negotiation, before we get to any of that, it's about who got the biggest guns? That's the way things work. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I got bigger guns than you. Why, why, am, I, why am I listening to you? I'm going to do what I want. And while you may not be that type of person, power has a way of corrupting. And at the end of the day, one of the things that society and civilization shields people from is the reality of the competition for resources and that so many people have to die in order for countries to exist at all. Like we're shielded from that. And so like in, in examples, this is why so many um, people are upset with Biden, because this is an opportunity where we're not shielded from reality. We're not shielded from the truth about how nations grow, how they form how people are basically just moved out of the way because there's only so much of everything. And while that isn't the full picture, that's kind of still what we're dealing with. All that to say, bro, put your foot down. You are the most powerful man in the world, basically, behind Xi Jinping. And it's like, dude, you got, we got the bigger guns. Tell Netanyahu to suck a dick. Tell him to fuck off. What what the what is he gonna do? Nothing. He gonna run his mouth and whine and complain because that's all he can do because this is America. At the end of the motherfucking day, that's how shit works. It just is. And so it's again before we get to business, before we get to negotiation, it's about motherfucker what you gonna do about it. That's the truth. So Biden, pull your pants up. Put your shirt on and tell this motherfucker Netanyahu to fuck off because ain't shit he can do about it. So let's see what Chris Cuomo has to say. Oh, that people in the White House monitor what I say. Good. And because President Biden. Hold on, hold on. We got Lady, Lady, Lady Punch T. 
Thank you so much for the ten dollar super chat. You said apparently. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I don't know, you know, yeah, YouTube, YouTube. I guess they try to keep it family friendly. But thank you so much for the ten dollar super chat, and thank you everybody for everything that you continue to do. But yeah, man, it's just like, bro, like, come on, man. But like. It's so glaringly obvious what you need to do. And he he ain't he just ain't doing it. Secretary of State Blinken won't come on the show. I am forced to speak at you rather than to you. This is not my choice. I understand. Talk to people within your party at very high levels, elected and unelected all the time. I know that the war in the Middle East is a major concern for you in the election. And I think that explains why you misplayed it the way you did today, okay? You gave a mixed message. You talked tough, what sounded like a threat to your main ally in the region, and then you said you're giving them more weapons. You're treating the war against Israel as if it were another political point of compromise. This is wrong, but this is wrong, and we need to do better here, and there has to be change, and blah, 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 ceasefire. A lot of words, a lot of conditional language, a lot of half-speak, a lot of appeasement in a situation that is not about balance. It is about realities. And I get the pressure from the left. I get it, and I get how tight the race is. And I get how worried you are that you're not going to have the same base you had the last time. But that is not an excuse to be weak. There is a primary reality, okay? And we seem to have forgotten it. Hamas is a terror organization. You designated them as that. They stole people. They need to give the people they stole back to us, to Israel, first. The hostages have become an afterthought. And that is wrong. And the reason it has happened is even more wrong. The reason it has happened is because other political exigencies and agendas have overtaken their relevance. The aid workers being hit, horrible. Matters, of course. Deserves attention, absolutely. But also makes the lack of attention to the hostages apparent. Hitting the aid workers, angels among us, is of course unacceptable. Everybody knows that. It also must be explained. And you should have called for that explanation today, because you know they already know the reason. This is a very sophisticated organization at the IDF. How can you focus on the aid workers who bravely took the risk to be there? Angels among us. That's why I and the team are willing to risk going there to see their work in action so people can see the need. But if you're going to say that what happened to them demands action, how do you not start with the return of the hostages as the most wrongfully injured victims in the entire situation? Every time you speak about what must happen and you do not begin with, hey, terrorists, give back who you stole, you are giving terrorists a pass. Every time you don't start there, you lose the Israeli ear. Now, if Hamas gives back the hostages, which you would likely require as a sine qua non, without this, nothing, in any other situation, certainly if it were you in Israel's position, then you have leverage. You have a basis for an exchange of wants. Not stop, cease fire, expose yourself, and then we hope to get the hostages back. You wouldn't do that. You're asking Israel to do what you never would. And I don't know who else has. Pulling back, under threat, existential threat, meaning they want you exterminated. The, well, there's still a little time left, but he's thus far, he ain't doing nothing but talking about the hostages, which definitely matters. But like, there's, there, there's kind of a, there's a lot more to it, but he's not done. So let's see. And by the way, you don't get your people back first. And it does feed the idea. I know you hear this, especially you, Tony. And I know I hear it because I know who's talked to you about it. That it feeds 
this malignancy that Jews are treated differently, that Hamas is given more of a break than your main ally. What? Why even mention ceasefire before they give back the hostages? Now, there's an obvious reason. Too much death in Gaza. Too many innocents dying in Gaza. Children dying, starving in Gaza. You are right. We must all agree. But what has the best chance of motivating a mitigation? Threats to Israel? Never. Political pressure on Bibi? He loves it. All the more reason to force the main want. Get the hostages back. You know what response I get to this? <sighs> yeah, you know, but Hamas, you know, they don't want to give them back. You know, they're bad guys. They need the leverage. Really? So instead, you want to force Israel to relent. Imagine how much stronger the message to Bibi would be if you came in saying, we told Hamas they have until X to hand over the hostages or else. And when they do, you need to do X, Y, and Z. The people in Gaza are calling for the release of the hostages more vehemently than you are. They know Hamas has put them in this hell. What do you know? And then you have a basis for telling Israel there has to be change. Otherwise, you're basically asking Israel to give Hamas the win and withdraw. It will not happen. You know this, which means you went in today saying those things to Bibi, having them reported when you know it's not going to happen. Not under Bibi, not under anyone, if the surveys are to be believed. So stop treating this as if Israel should be the bigger person. They are convinced they are targeted for extermination. Stop treating this like it's a debate about the debt ceiling. He's I don't I don't disagree with with, you know, his idea in terms of a strategy, because you're going to have to do multiple things anyway, in terms of being like, we're going to make we're going to we are going to make sure we get rid of these hostages. And then Israel really doesn't have an excuse to continue to do what they're doing in Gaza. Because it's like, look, the hostages is gone. So you got to stop this shit. You don't even have you don't even have um an argument you have no rebuttal i agree with him there um i think that what he's also doing here is kind of he's trying to make he's trying to sell that message to a group of people who are very very pro israel you know what i'm saying so that, that i feel like that's kind of why he's also you know kind of making it making it like oh well you know israel thinks that they're under siege like no they don't really think that but he kind of has to say that because if he doesn't then his audience or the bulk of his audience won't receive the message so all in all i think what's important is that um displeasure and disapproval of the way biden is handling the israel gaza situation has risen to this level of like centrist liberal you know what i mean so regardless of the fact of how he may be delivering this message the fact that he is delivering the message i think is very important because that means that pretty much everybody is feeling this way um so so yeah like it's brinksmanship like it's a fake deadline there is too much blood on the floor for this to be about a typical compromise. Netanyahu may not give a shit about the hostages, but if we forced it to where we got them, the pol politically, you can shut Netanyahu down easier because he doesn't have that as an excuse anymore. If he, if, 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 as long as you still have that carrot to dangle up, Netanyahu can be like, well. <laughs> But if the hostages are free, then you, then it's just a stronger political approach to be like, look, motherfucker, your argument's done. It's over. So I don't see any issue with anything that he's saying here, because at the end of the day, all he's offering is an approach forward. And for something like this, you're going to have to have a lot of approaches like so, you know, I, I, I don't I, I, again, I think what's important is that this concern has risen to this level um everybody's unhappy about this shit like he, he joe biden can't really pretend like you know it's just the left that's tripping about it and you know it the place to push is obvious hostages and with israel i mean he may but that's the thing like i'm not 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna personally diss what Cuomo is saying because he isn't wrong. Because like what I was saying at the end of the day, we got the bigger gun. So if if I come to you and I'm like, listen, your argument is over, and then you continue to not do what I say, that gives me the leverage to come in and basically shoot your shit up and make you do what I'm telling you to do. So that's why I'm not against what he's saying, because like politically speaking, like you have to you have to have like an argument for the actions you're going to take. So Biden could still do do shit with the hostages still being there. But I think, again, like the, the bigger the bigger point is that. Do something, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody is calling for Biden to do something and he's just not. He ain't doing nothing. Aid. Several reasons. It's the right thing to do as a moral authority. People are starving. It's bad and it makes Israel look bad. Like, I, I don't really I don't really think realistically there's like one right way to go about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to pull all types of levers so that you can have leverage and excuse, because at the end of the day, this is war. So if 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 Netanyahu, I mean, what's really going to make him stop? One of two things, either. One of two things are going to make him stop. Either you block Israel off from a bunch of shit or you go in there and shoot shit up. That's the truth. That's the that's the reality. There is less aid getting in than before October 7th, and there is more need for it than ever. You are making a generation ready for radicalization. And that's understandable. If all you know is a life of squalor and death, what do you think is going to happen? We got Virginia Thomas. Thank you for the five dollar super chase. If Netanyahu doesn't seem to care about the hostages, now again, I don't disagree with you, but politically speaking, it's about the it's about it's about the politics on the world stage. It really doesn't matter what Netanyahu cares about because he doesn't have the power. The only reason Netanyahu's able to do what he's doing is because he's being allowed to do it, and he's being helped because people are giving him weapons. It doesn't matter what the fuck Netanyahu wants because we got the bigger guns. If Joe Biden wanted to stop Netanyahu, that's the that's the problem. He doesn't want to do anything about it. If he wanted to stop him, all he would have to do is say, look, this is the truth. Listen, motherfucker, if you don't stop, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to blow you motherfuckers up. What is Netanyahu going to do? OK, because he can't stop us from doing that shit. So the, the problem is Joe Biden doesn't want to act. He don't want to do nothing because wh who, who gives a fuck what Netanyahu wants? Who cares? Fuck what Netanyahu wants. Joe Biden doesn't want to do anything. And that's why I'm and that's why I'm saying I'm not like you got Chris Cuomo doing all this. Everybody's pissed off about this shit everybody's pissed and exactly he he is gonna have to be removed because again it's like y'all didn't y'all didn't let y'all have allowed this man netanyahu to get to a point where he feels like no one's gonna do anything about it but again that that's that's our fault and it's not even just biden's fault i mean you know the u.s the united states and apac have been in cahoots for quite some time so this goes back a long way it's so ingrained into the way our political system works you know what i'm saying like it's just joe, joe biden is like dude are you seriously about to lose this election to donald trump are you serious man like because again it's like what what Fuck what Netanyahu wants. Who cares? But corruption, man, corruption is a motherfucker. It's so powerful. It's so powerful that this little pipsqueak of a world leader isn't being stopped. It's it's so stupid. And there we didn't and, and we didn't let him get we didn't let him get to this point. We're going to blame America as much as Israel. This is also a chance to widen the role of. I mean, I think we didn't pretty much got the point of this. But again, ultimately, what I was getting at is, you know, what what Chris Cuomo is suggesting. Yeah, that that's not going to like in the solution. But I think that, again, it's important that we got people like Chris Cuomo saying this because it's like, 
I mean, so many Palestinians are just being slaughtered. Even if you don't care about the issue, how can you not acknowledge? You know what I'm saying? How can you not acknowledge the shit? It's so stupid. Like, what the fuck is Netanyahu going to do besides run his mouth and complain? What's he going to do? He can't do nothing. But Joe, but again, the, the problem is Joe Biden. He don't want to do nothing. You said, how is he not ending other wars mean Trump wins? I don't know what you're talking about. But no, I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Quesadilla. Joe, Joe Biden is 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 totally fucking this off. At the end of the day, his biggest problem in terms of the election is people want something to, I don't know, what? Uh, nah, Quesadilla, I, th I, th I think you're being a little bit too much of a progressive right now. You, you like who I don't like Chris Cuomo either, but like it, it we we don't you know it it's I, I don't really know what you're getting at. All right, now here we got this guy. See, like like th this this attitude right here. The world seems to have forgotten about October seventh after Biden put screws on Israel. Like, what are you talking about? Ain't nobody forget about October seventh. Do want to turn to, as I mentioned, you just got back from Israel. You are very outspoken in your support of Israel and its right to defend itself. President Biden is now warning Israel that there will be consequences if it does not address civilian crises in Gaza. Uh, Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson. What do you mean, Quesadilla? His, his big, one of his biggest problems in the election is the fact that he isn't calling for a ceasefire. What do you the people who who went uncommitted, who didn't vote for Joe Biden, like what are you talking about? Like what 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 else is his biggest problem? The youth vote and the Muslim American vote. So what do you mean? What are you talking about? Says like I literally don't know what you're talking about. The president's ultimatums should be going to Hamas, not Israel. Who do you agree with? Well, I think we should be crystal clear. The Republicans have been char in charge of the House since October 7th and have fundamentally failed to pass a bipartisan bill that provides aid to Israel. The Republicans refused to bring to the floor a national security supplemental that would provide aid to all of our allies, Taiwan, Israel, and Ukraine. And so if you're allowing aid to Israel to languish indefinitely, then you're in no position to lecture anyone, including President Biden, on his support for Israel. You know, I share the view that every conceivable effort must be made to minimize Palestinian casualties, to maximize humanitarian aid to Palestinians in distress. But at the same time, any attempt to fundamentally undermine the U.S.-Israel relationship will ultimately benefit Hamas, which had perpetrated the deadliest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, a fact that the world... And then, too, like, we're sending them weapons. Like we're 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 sending them weapons. Like th this is his biggest problem right now. I don't understand what you're so upset about, Quesadilla. You tripping? Seems to have forgotten. Congressman, you uh, heard, I'm sure, that President Biden, according to the White House, told Prime Minister Netanyahu an immediate ceasefire is essential to stabilize and improve humanitarian uh, assistance in the situation there. Do you think? That, in your words, is something that is helpful to Hamas. Do you disagree with the president on that? Well, there was a temporary humanitarian ceasefire on the table, and Israel accepted it, and Hamas rejected it. So Hamas has been the greatest stumbling block to a humanitarian ceasefire. Um, and so Israel has been cooperative. It sounds like... President Biden might want to go further than that if he's calling on the prime minister to uh, have an immediate ceasefire. That sounds like stronger language and a, a stronger or a different uh, policy stance than we've seen in the past when, of course, it has been very much tied to, to hostages. Do you not see it that way? 
Look, for me, the end goal of removing Hamas from power must be non-negotiable, right? The means by which it is done can be negotiable. It can be the subject of debate between the United States and Israel. But if Hamas remains in power, there will never be security for Israel and there will never be peace between Israelis and Palestinians. The removal of Hamas from power is a precondition for both security and peace mm -hmm. in the region. Okay, so there's that question about a ceasefire and ending um, the, the conflict that's going on right now. And then the other piece of it is what you all do in the United States Congress, which is uh, theoretically giving money and aid to Israel. Some of your most pro-Israel fellow Democrats, Senator Chris Coons, for example, now say they support putting conditions on U.S. aid to Israel. Do you? Uh, I respectfully disagree. Um, I feel like we should remain fundamentally supportive of the U.S.-Israel relationship, which is in the interest of the United States. Uh, Israel's our greatest ally this in the is Middle East. so robotic. Yeah, no, I mean, he, th this, this was so, this was so robotic. I mean, at the end of the day, Joe Biden's biggest problem is the swing states in the youth vote, the Muslim American vote. And they have made very clear that they at least want Biden to appear like he cares about the Palestinians. And he isn't doing that. And then if, if that ends up being why he loses, then Democrats and centrists are going to be like, oh, every, everyone who didn't vote for Biden's an idiot. Everybody's so stupid. But it's like, or Joe Biden could have addressed the addressed the issues appropriately, which he isn't doing. He's not doing it. Like I, I don't really see the point in, in giving Biden imaginary credit there. Like he doesn't deserve it. And I'm somebody who has I'm somebody who has endlessly given him time. And hey, I'm I'm one of the only people on TYT's network who has given Joe Biden time to address this and he isn't doing it. So I'm not going to sit up here and be like, this, this isn't a problem. Yes, it is a problem. This is, his, this is his biggest problem. Like, and if he doesn't want to address it, then he's going to fucking lose. And then when he does, it's going to be everyone's fault except for his. And it's just like, I, I did, I, you know, all right. Where, where are we at now? We got Kid Rock and we got Maggie Haberman. Let's check this video out. Maggie Haberman says Trump will refuse to accept true social shortcomings. Is trying to will it into a deal. When is he ever not doing this? Yeah, his response uh, to days of bad headlines about his social media company was to post, quote, my TV ratings are by far the highest and my rallies are not equaled, even close anywhere by anyone. How hard is this for him to accept that True Social isn't, you know, the, the Twitter killer or just a success of a sort in, in its own right that he'd hoped it would be? I think we have seen him over and over again to refuse to accept uh, external reality and to continue to try to paint things as he wants them to be seen. And this is one of those times. However, you know, the objective reality. Did Quesadilla leave? Because he, he, he seemed, he seemed, or whoever Quesadilla is, you seemed like uncharacteristically upset. And now you ain't saying nothing is the fact that the stock tumbled earlier this week. You know, what was initially adding to his net worth, at least on paper, by several billions, is no longer that. He is getting a lot of headlines around this, and he is just trying to will it into some kind of a different reality. I think, you know, for most of his supporters, I don't think the fact that Truth Social is not doing well uh, this week, or as well as it had been said to, and there's lawsuits and so forth, and a lot of bad press around it, uh, is going to bother them. But, you know, as you know, he watches very closely anything related to his net worth, and he is keenly aware of what is being written about it and said about it. I, I still think that this is going to be where you see him focus his energy as Truth Social. I think he is not likely to return to Twitter any time before the election. But, you know, this is not... <laughs> He, he definitely going to get back on Twitter. Well, I don't know if he definitely will, but I've been thinking that for a while. Like, 
when is he going to get back on Twitter? Because he can if he wants to. You know, he could go on there and start running his mouth. But I guess if he did that, then that may take away from True Social because ain't nobody else really on True Social except for his ass. In terms of the most usage, he'd be, he be posting like 60, 70 times a day. More, more proof that nobody really cared. <laughs> None of these people actually cared about this. All right, let's see where we at. Kid Rock appears confused, drink in hand, when asked why he's wearing a Budweiser hat on. Because he, because he never cared. That was just man, we got, <clears throat> we got. I didn't know what hat I was wearing. We got bigger targets. I mean, when you look at what, uh, what who just Planet Fitness? Like, what are they doing? Like Ben and Jerry's. Uh, I don't want to put any targets on people's back. Target, like. I talked to the dudes from Bud Light or Anheuser Busch, the CEO, and the people like, man, they messed up. It's too bad they just won't say it. Like, hey, we messed up a little bit, you know, whatever. But that's not how they're cut. And um, you know what? I, I got my <laughs> answer. And uh, <clears throat> I don't want to. He's drunk as hell. <laughs> what is he even talking about? All right, that actually sums up. That sums up what what we went over today. What what we're going over today. I had a couple other things pulled up, but eh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's really all that necessary. <laughs> oh, but yes, y'all got any fun plans over the weekend? What you got going on? I don't know what I'm doing. It's not like super beautiful out here this weekend. It's kind of like, it's kind of chill, you know, like it's kind of cool. It'll be like mid forties, cloudy. I think I'm going to get a, I wanted to go out for a run today, but I'm I'm too tired. I'm going to get some sleep tonight. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. Go for a run and uh, see what else is up. <laughs> hey, I, I, I thought that I thought that was kind of strange, man. Like. I thought that was like the 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 one issue that clearly Biden is struggling with is this Israel Gaza shit. And like, you can try to logic your way around it, but it is what it is, man. P the people have spoken. The, the young people don't want to fucking vote for him because of Israel Gaza, among other things, but that's the biggest thing. And people in the swing states and the Muslim American vote, like what? So what? Like, oh, well, all of them will show up to the polls when the general election comes. Like, and then again, I I just I don't know. I don't really at this point, there's just no there's no need to give Joe Biden, you know, credit in that area. It's been too long. It's like, dude, if you don't do something immediately, you finna lose. Or at least look like you're trying to do something. Damn, like it it's it, it I don't know, man. And again, I'm somebody. I done got on y'all nerves for how how much I've been willing to ride for Joe Biden. I've been I've been willing to give him time because it makes sense to give him time. I mean, like, what well, we was a year and a half out, a year out, and I'm like, eh, let's wait a little bit, see what happens. But now we're getting closer and closer, and it's like, I, I mean, how can how can I continue to say that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can how can I say that? I can't keep saying that shit because I don't believe it anymore. You know, like, I don't believe it anymore. So it is what it is. But, yes, I want to, I don't know, I got to go see that Godzilla movie. I don't know. But we'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. Y'all have a fantastic weekend. I'm probably going to end up streaming. I'm going to stream tomorrow before I go for a run. I'm going to end up doing that. And um, y'all have a good weekend. I'll see you tomorrow.